my experience from like a consumer standpoint, things that I liked, things that I've noticed, all the different features and things like that because they do have a launch week coming up. So if you click the link in my description box, it will lead you to their website and you just scroll all the way down on a certain screen grab here where you can enter your email, you sign up, subscribe, and that subscription email will enter you to win a Yeedy Vac Station completely free, $499 value, and it will also give you a $100 coupon to be used on Amazon during your launch week, which is from July 17th till, till July 25th. You can use this $100 coupon to get $100 off this entire Vac Station, which is a really good deal in my opinion, so you can get the whole ensemble for $3.99 essentially. So click that link down below if you guys are interested in purchasing this at the end of this video. But I just wanted to have a video up to kind of share my experience with it before the launch week actually happened. I do have my Dyson here right here because this is my main vacuum source. I always joke that vacuuming is like my hobby. I would vacuum multiple times a day. I feel like with kids and crumbs and things like that, I was just like always vacuuming the entryway, the rug, just everywhere. Like, that's my cat playing with his toy, so if you hear any mouse noises, that's what it is. But my goal of this video is to kind of talk about the pros and cons of this vacuum, my experience, things that I've noticed, and then how it compares to my Dyson V6. Because my Dyson V6 is kind of in a very similar price range, but they are completely different things. This one, obviously, it is cordless, but it obviously requires the user to maneuver throughout. Very convenient if, uh, in terms of vacuums because it gets in all the nooks and crannies. It has different attachments. It's easy to use. You just recharge it. This one is completely different in the sense that it is almost, almost completely hands-free. And I say almost because the mop does require you to put water in it. I actually have the attachment right here. And I already have water in it to go so that it's ready when I show you how it works. And you do need to do this yourself, you know, place the mop plate in as well as take it out before you return it to the station. But otherwise, it is completely hands-free vacuuming. It's kind of like having your own little personal maid. So as you guys saw in the beginning of the video, I had it set to seven o'clock in the morning. Usually I have it set to eight o'clock, but because I wanted to start my day early and film this video, I set it today to seven o'clock in the morning. So by the time we get out of bed and we're functioning, basically more than half of my house is already clean. Unlike the Dyson, obviously requires somebody else to vacuum. This is like, kind of like your own little personal maid, I like to call it. And this is a vac station, so it does come with this station right here. And what it is, is basically a two-in-one. It vacuums, it mops, it vacuums while it mops, which I was really intrigued by, the fact that it actually vacuums while it's mopping your floor. So if there's like any anything on the floor and it's mopping and going through, it will pick that up into the dustbin or into the vacuum and then once you're ready to return it to charge, it will return to station. You can do it manually through the app. I'll talk about the app as well because I think the app has so many great features. It allows the user to have a lot more control in my opinion. But it will go back to the station and it will self dump itself. So there's no need, for example, with my Dyson, I obviously have to dump this myself. It is not self dumping. But with this, it will self dump into the station here. And this baggie right here holds about 30 days worth of trash and debris. I've been using this vacuum, I wanna say, for a little close to a month, I wanna say, maybe even a month or so, maybe a little less. Um, and I did get a not notification, I'll insert a little screenshot right here through the app telling me that I do need to change out the bag or dump it. So that is really nice that the app tells you all these different things. There's so many other things that the app has that I'll talk about. So it had about, I wanna say, like 20 days worth of trash, which is really good in my opinion because 
you don't have to worry about dumping it or anything. So this is the station, the vac station here. This is the actual robot vacuum. This is the part that is going to be vacuuming your house. This is the Yidi by the brand Yidi. And I love the sleek design. It is very aesthetically pleasing to look at in my opinion. I love the white. It blends in very nice with my home decor. It's not like clunky or, you know, it just looks very nice and I don't actually mind it sitting here in my formal living room. I actually don't mind it at all. I kind of want to go through, I have some notes here on my app and just talk about different points. So the first thing that I want to talk about is obviously the app. The app. It does come with a Yeedy app, which you download through your app store, I guess. And you can hook up or kind of um, add any as many robot vacuums as you want. Let me kind of get closer so you can see as I'm talking through. I have the Yeedy Vac Station here. And when you click on it, there are just so many different great features. The first thing that you see when you get to the home screen, mine is just called UD Backstation. You can rename it to whatever you want, but the first thing that you see is a layout of your home. So my bedrooms are actually right here. They're not included in this map layout. I'm assuming that is because the vacuum needs about three runs total to get a pretty decent map layout going of your home before you can manage the map. It needs to run about three times if I'm not mistaken. And all three times I had all of our bedroom doors closed here. So the vacuum never really went past this hallway to enter our bedrooms. So it just only mapped out this area. You can delete this map if you wanted to and just have it start new. But for me, you know, it's not a big deal. So I just kept it. And I just kind of want to talk about everything that you guys are seeing. So the vac station is right here right now. And it's kind of neat that you can see the vacuum as it's going along. I'll insert a clip of it running from this morning, that little segment that you guys saw in the introduction, but you'll see it going uh, through this area right here and the blue trail is where the vacuum has already cleaned. And this area right here is a, no is a boundary that I placed where I don't want it to go. So you will be able to see in the video that the vacuum is kind of like avoiding that red area. And that's the cool thing about this app is that you can set boundaries where you don't want it to mop or where you don't want it to vacuum and mop. And you do that through the map management right here. You click map management and you do virtual boundaries. You can do it for vacuuming and mopping or for mopping only. And I set mine right here and right here in our formal living room because I want it to avoid our curtains. It does get tangled in curtains. This is the coffee table. I just kind of want it to avoid this area instead of bumping, bumping into it. But then the one thing that I did notice about this vacuum is that it has a very good sense of objects. Like it's not just gonna slam into walls and slam into your tables. It almost like senses that it's nearing a wall or a table and it slows down, which is really cool. Um, then I also placed a boundary here, which we have kind of like a little uh, space in the floor where we have to do a plate for our wood stove. So it kind of like falls in there. It would always fall in there and get stuck. So I just placed a virtual boundary so it can avoid it altogether and problem solved. And then this right here is my formal, well, my dining room. And I have it avoid this area because we have a fringe, like t a tassel rug, like the edges have tassel on it. And it does get tangled in there, unfortunately. So I just have it avoid this area altogether. And if I need to vacuum there, I'll just vacuum with my Dyson. So that is the virtual boundaries. You can label areas. I will say that one downside is, as you guys can see, this is basically one big open concept. This is the formal living room. This is our kitchen, our dining room, our family room. And the map reads it as one big area. So I wish there was a way where I can like set up boundaries and draw like room lines and say, hey, this is my family room, this is my dining room, but it doesn't allow me to do that. So the map reads this all as one room. You can name the room whatever you want. I named it just kitchen just because the kitchen is in the middle but it basically reads this entire thing as the kitchen. If I had the option to label different areas, then this app does allow you to set a sequence, like a cleaning sequence, which I'll show you guys right now. You just go down to cleaning preference and they have the cleaning sequence option right here. So you would click on the areas that you want it to clean in whatever order, like you would do one, two, three, four, 
I only have one area, so for me it's just one, so I'm not able to do that. But I have my vacuum set up to auto, which is this middle function here. And essentially what it is is that it just automatically cleans starting from here, going through your whole entire house. And like you guys saw in the beginning of the video, it does follow a very nice pattern. It goes kind of like this instead of just going all these different ways because I have actually tried several robot vacuums in the past. I actually have one right there that you guys can see. It is one off of Amazon. I've tried the Roomba and a lot of times they would just kind of like go whichever which way. I'm sure that technology has come a long way since I've had my first Roomba, but this one is nice because it follows a nice pattern and it doesn't just go whatever which way. Other cleaning preferences within the app other than the cleaning sequence are things like continuous cleaning which I have on and basically what that is is that it will finish unfinished tasks after it is fully charged. So for example if it dies it will just kind of continue where it left off. And then there's also do not disturb. Mine is set to do not disturb from 2200 to 7 o'clock in the morning. There's also auto boost suction, which I have on as well. And what that is, is that it will increase suction on carpeted areas. So let me actually show you how that works because I think that is a really cool thing. When it goes from hardwood to carpeted areas, you can hear the vacuum kind of like increases suction. You can turn it off if you want to, but I just have it on. So I placed it behind me and another cool thing that you can do within the app is kind of designate it to clean a certain area. These are the main three different cleaning modes. You can have it clean an area, like I said, which for me, it's just one area. So that is one downside. But if you do have more than one area that it reads, you can have it clean like the family room only. Uh, for me, that's not a big deal because they also do have the custom option. So what that is, is that this little thingy pops up when you click custom and you can drag it wherever you want within your map. I just want it to clean this little area here just to show you the difference between carpet and hardwood. So I'm just going to set it to this little boundary here and then you just click play and it reads it, sends it to the vacuum and starts cleaning. Starting cleaning. As you guys saw in that little clip, you can tell that when it went from the hardwood to the carpet, it automatically increased suction, which I think is a really cool feature to have. And then last but not least, within the cleaning preferences within the app, there is an auto empty. So when enabled and the vacuum returns to the station, it will auto empty. You can do it through the app. I have it set so that it automatically empties, making it completely hands-free, well, virtually hands-free. So let me have it return to station, and you can do this within the app as well. This button right here, which says return to charge. Return to charge. And this shows you where the vacuum is at any given time. So if it gets stuck, um, you'll be able to see like what room it got stuck in, which is kind of cool. I did also want to insert a clip of the things going on underneath here. So when you first get the app, this is the QR code that you scan to kind of get you started. This is the on off button, reset button, the Wi-Fi is enabled. You can empty the dustbin manually if you wanted to. It also comes with a cleaning tool. So this cleaning tool, it will tell you within the app right here. Let me actually mention it now since we are here. Within the app, if you click on these three dots right here, it will tell you the accessories usage, which I think is really cool. So my side brush is 67% used. The main brush is 85% used, the filter, and it will tell you when you need to replace it. It will tell you when you need to clean certain things using this brush tool right here. And then it has like this little knife right here to help clean out the actual main brush in case anything gets tangled here underneath. So I feel like they've really thought out all the little fine details. So those are the cleaning preferences that I wanted to talk about. Within the app, there's a cleaning record, so you can look at your cleaning record, a vacuum power, mine is set to standard because I have it set to auto suction or um, 
yeah, auto suction so that it automatically increases, boosts the suction when it's on carpet. So I just keep my vacuum power at standard. You can set up a cleaning schedule. This is where I set it to eight o'clock every morning. You can also have it clean an area. Unfortunately, because I only have one area, I this is the only area that it would clean, which is basically my, <laughs> my entire house. So if you did have um, different rooms set up on your map, then you could have it clean like Say example, after dinner, you wanted it to clean the kitchen or the dining room area 5, 6 p.m. every single day or Monday through Friday. So that is something that you can set up through here, which would have been really cool. Um, so that is one downside. This is the, you can change the language, the volume, and just so many great features. This is the little bubble right here. And, here, I'm ready to start. And it will tell you, for example, if the, it'll say like check uh, robot vacuum tires or it got stuck it'll tell you right here and this guy turns from blue to red and then you can also track it so for example if it gets stuck tangled right here you'll see that the vacuum is right here and it will tell you that it got stuck so so many really cool features within the app that gives the user a lot of control in my opinion in order to use the mopping function you do want to take this wet cloth right here wet it wring out the water and then attach it and in order to clean the mop you just clean it with some soap and water and let it air dry you do pour in water through this little spot right here i already have water in here like i said and they do recommend water only just because some of the detergents cleaning solutions can be too abrasive and ruin your vacuum so water only i do add some essential oils now and then to kind of help um like i use like a purifying one to help clean the floors and things like that, but otherwise I just use water and the vacuum will automatically sense when the mopping plate has been installed. So I'm gonna place Off it the floor. I'm gonna place it right here on this hardwood here and you will see that it will say mopping plate installed and make sure that you hear a clicking sound. Mopping plate has been installed. So the mopping plate has been installed and once you click it on, it's just gonna go through and mop your floor and I'm gonna show you how it avoids the carpet. It does take a few seconds to kind of uh, read. Starting cleaning. As you can see right here, it leaves like a wet trail. Not too wet, just enough to kind of clean. And they do recommend wetting the cloth to kind of help with more even cleaning. And the vacuum does have a good amount of weight to it. So it actually does a pretty good job and the best thing is that it doesn't do like a deep deep clean obviously it the best thing i will say about this vacuum is that it helps maintain cleanliness in your home and i have been using this mopping function probably once or twice a week it's just been amazing i actually really love this feature and you can also set it up to mop certain areas of your home that you wanted it to mop but let me just wait for it to kind of get on the carpet so you can see how it kind of avoids the carpeted area right there. Very smart technology in my opinion. So let me turn that off. Cleaning paused. And then in order to return to station, you do wanna take out this mopping plate. And then you can hold this button right here for about six seconds and it will return um, probably like eight seconds. I kind of like to place it in front of the vac station because sometimes it can kind of have a hard time. That's one thing that I noticed. If it's in a different room, it might have a hard time finding its way back, so you might have to assist it. So I kind of talked about everything that I wanted to talk about, just looking at my notes here. So the pros are is that it definitely has significantly cut down on the amount of time that I vacuum, for sure. I will only use my Dyson for like quick cleanups if we're eating and the kids made a mess or I need to clean something up really quick or um, the vacuum does do a really good job of cleaning areas I don't get but if you wanted like really precise cleaning like in corners and different attachments and things but otherwise this is great for keeping the house clean and being like your little personal maid. I love that it is basically completely hands free other than having to put in the water tank and then take it out before it needs to be charged but it empties the dustbin all by itself kind of like does its own thing. You set it on its own schedule within your app. You can locate where it is. You can have it clean certain areas in your home you can have it mop certain areas in your home you can set virtual boundaries that you want it to avoid 
Um, just so many great features in my opinion. So there are so many pros. I love that it is aesthetically pleasing. It is, the technology is definitely there in my opinion. I do think that it is worth the price point. Um, some cons is the open layout home. I do wish there was a way to kind of create boundaries myself and place them within the app to be like, hey, this is my kitchen, uh, this is my dining room. It's not a deal breaker because if I wanted to, using the custom option, you can have it clean certain areas, but it would have been nice if you, I don't know, just the fact that you know that the option is there but you can't really use it because it doesn't really read your house as being more than like one big room. Uh, so that is one con that I noticed. It can get tangled, but that's not, particular to this robot vacuum, any robot vacuum will get tangled in wires. You want to make sure there's no toys, shoelaces, like Barbie clothes it has sucked up before and got stuck, the curtains, like any loose things like this. This is just common knowledge whenever you have a robot vacuum. So those are my only cons. Otherwise, I really love it. I think it is a great buy for sure. It has been a great addition to our home. Cleans my home every single morning and within the app if I wanted it to clean something. Like for example, we had family over the other day and we were done eating breakfast and I needed to clean the table. So I set my vacuum to clean the kitchen and dining area. I like set a little boundary up and as I was cleaning the dishes, the vacuum was going through and like vacuuming everything that fell on the floor. So that was really cool and it's not like too loud or obnoxious. This is more of just discreet little personal made option. So check that link out down below. I hope I covered everything and kind of like helped you guys understand this vacuum a little better. Check out the website, subscribe for that $100 off coupon and to be entered to win. I will leave all the details down in my description box down below. So be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in future videos.